Hi everyone, this is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast I'll be reviewing the muscle tissue, giving an introduction to the different types of muscle tissues, their basic structure and functions, and we'll also take a look at the major properties of muscle tissue. Myology is a specialized branch of anatomy that studies the structure and functions of muscles. The prefix myo refers to muscles, and you'll be seeing a lot of this prefix in the terms throughout the chapter. In general, muscles are concerned with motility, which is a term that describes movement. So we can look at movement of the skeletal system as muscles contract and pull on bone to move the appendages. We can also look at motility involving organ contraction as the stomach, for example, contracts during digestion to physically mix the food. Muscle fibers are able to contract to shorten their length to enable motility to occur. And they can also relax, which is the restoration of their original resting length. So they're very versatile tissues that are incredibly dynamic. And we'll be looking at the structure and function of the proteins that make up the muscle fibers to allow the contraction and relaxation processes to occur very efficiently. We also see an energy conversion in muscle tissue where the chemical energy of nutrients in food such as glucose is broken down through aerobic cellular respiration into ATP and ATP is consumed to power muscles contraction. That movement, that motility and contraction is mechanical energy. That's the work that's being performed to cause the whole muscle to shorten as it pulls against bone, to contract blood vessels during vasoconstriction to decrease they, their diameter. That's all physical work that's performed, which is a reflection of mechanical energy. There are three types of muscle tissue skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. Let's take a look at their similarities and differences. Skeletal muscle tissue is found in the muscles of the body that move the bones of the skeleton. It's also attached to the skin and fascia, which are sheets of dense irregular connective tissue that surrounds the body's organs. Skeletal muscle is classified as striated muscle because it is composed of microscopic dark and light protein bands that resemble stripes, which we call striations, that alternate with each other. The muscle fibers, or cells, are arranged parallel to each other, meaning they are all aligned in the same direction. It is described as voluntary muscle, because skeletal muscle is under conscious control by the nervous system, specifically the somatic or voluntary division. You can think about moving your fingers as you type, and then you move your fingers. But skeletal muscle can also be under subconscious control and is able to contract and relax without us thinking about doing so. For example, the muscles that are involved in posture as you are sitting and listening or watching to this podcast, or the respiratory muscles, like the diaphragm, are contracting, allowing us to breathe without us being consciously aware of it. Cardiac muscle tissue is only found in the wall of the heart. Like skeletal muscle tissue, it's also striated, but its fibers are branched, not parallel with each other. It also differs in that it's involuntary. It's able to contract and relax without conscious thought. Instead, it uses a collection of specialized cardiac muscle fibers called autorhythmic fibers that act as the heart's pacemaker. It's the job of the pacemaker to initiate the heart's contraction, but the heart rate can be regulated through the nervous system 
particularly by the autonomic or involuntary division, and also through endocrine feedback by hormones. Smooth muscle is found throughout the body's viscera or organs, especially in the walls of hollow organs, such as the organs of the GI tract, blood vessels, and respiratory airways like the bronchioles. In contrast to skeletal and cardiac muscle, smooth muscle is unstriated, and it doesn't have the alternating dark and light bands, and instead has a smoother appearance, hence the name smooth muscle. The cells are individual, not connected together, and have a skinny, tapered, toothpick-like appearance, and are often found bundled together. Like cardiac muscle, smooth muscle is also involuntary and regulated by the autonomic division of the nervous system and through hormones. You don't have to think of your stomach or intestine contracting during digestion. Okay, now let's take a look at the four major functions of muscle tissue as a whole. First function is producing body movements. When muscles contract, they pull on bones of the skeleton to enable overall body movement, such as during walking, running, or swimming. They also enable smaller, more localized movements, such as typing on a keyboard or playing the guitar. The second major function is stabilizing body positions. When muscles contract, they can also maintain body positions by stabilizing joints, such as when you're sitting, standing, or performing yoga poses. We often don't think about the contraction of these postural muscles, but they are helping us maintain long-term positions, such as sitting and holding our heads upright while we're driving. The third major function is storing and moving substances within the body. There are small belt-like bands of circular smooth muscle tissue located in the hollow organs called sphincters that, when contracted, can store materials inside the organ and, when relaxed, can release the materials out of the organ. Food is temporarily held in the stomach through sphincter contractions, as is urine in the urinary bladder. The heart's cardiac muscles are used to pump blood out of the heart and into blood vessels. Smooth muscle in the walls of the blood vessels can contract and relax to regulate their diameter during vasoconstriction and vasodilation and make changes in blood pressure and blood flow. Many substances can flow through the body courtesy of smooth muscle contractions, such as urine, the gametes like sperm and the oocytes, as well as bile and other digestive secretions. The last major function of muscle tissue is generating heat. Thermogenesis is a heat generating process that occurs when muscles contract. This heat is used to help maintain normal body temperature homeostasis during thermoregulation. When our body temperature drops, our muscles can contract involuntarily during shivering, which helps increase our body temperature. There are four major properties of muscular tissue that allow it to carry out its functions and help in the body's homeostasis. These properties are electrical excitability, extensibility, contractility, and elasticity. The first property of electrical excitability is shared by both muscle and nervous tissue and is the ability of the tissue to respond to stimuli and generate electrical signals called impulses, also known as action potentials. In muscle fibers, we call these impulses muscle action potentials. There are two main types of stimuli that can generate muscle action potentials. Specialized autorhythmic muscle fibers, like the pacemaker in cardiac muscle tissue, can produce its own electrical signals. And chemical stimuli, like neurotransmitters, hormones, and ions. The second property is extensibility. This means that muscle tissue has the capability of being stretched up to a certain point without any damage. 
This is similar to stretching a rubber band without breaking it. Skeletal muscle has the least amount of extensibility. As the fibers elongate, the force of contraction weakens, whereas cardiac muscle is better adapted to extend in order to accommodate the inflow of blood into the heart, which stretches it out. Smooth muscle has the greatest range of extensibility to accommodate large volumes of foods and fluids moving into the expanding stomach. The third property of contractility is the muscle's ability to strongly contract or shorten in length when triggered by a muscle action potential. The force of contraction or muscle tension is produced when muscle fibers contract, causing the muscle to pull on its points of attachment. Muscles can also contract and develop tension, but not shorten, as in maintaining the position of a book held in your hand while reading. But when muscle tension increases to a point higher than the load, also called resistance of the object, the muscle shortens during contraction and the object is moved, such as lifting the book off of a shelf. The fourth property is elasticity. This is the muscle's ability to recoil or return back to its original resting length after extension or contraction. This is similar to a rubber band returning back to its original length after it's been stretched. It's important to remember the difference between extensibility and elasticity. Remember, extensibility is the ability to be stretched, but elasticity is the ability to bounce back and return to the original resting length.